Praise God. Hallelujah. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God the praise, saints. Praise His holy name forever. Help us today, Father, in the strong and glorious name of Jesus the Christ, who will appear again soon, but He's not coming this year. I don't even believe He's coming next year. I don't even believe we started the last three and a half years yet. Oh, you said Jesus was coming in 2018. No, I said I believed He would. Just by all the, the uh, word in the scripture about the 70 years of judgment, 70 years of uh, the abominations accomplished in Jerusalem. But I did not say Jesus was coming in the year 2018 last year because Israel became a nation last year. But as we'll get to this message here today, you're going to see how profound a liar Brother Stare, Ralph Stare, R.G. Stare, whatever name he wants to go by, his name is Ralph. Ralph Stare. Ralph means wolf counsel. Just like Jesus said, their hearts are inside and their heart, they're ravening wolves. As you've heard, the ravening of Brother Ralph Stare. I'm gonna get to uh all the I'm gonna get to some clips that I've been using. Throughout the Milk Green series, how Milk Green preached on a pure heart, only the pure in heart are going to see God. Praise God. Those that are have a heart like R.G. Stare are going to end up in hell. Just like you'll hear him say, it's showdown, showdown time. That's right, it's showdown time. And I could care less what kind of a outreach anybody has on radio or television or whatever. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. And he has perverts out there like R.G. Stare polluting, distorting, perverting the word of God. R.G. Stare is the beguiler of the age. He's the liar of the age. R.G. Stare, Ralph Stare, you are a liar. And in hell, you will lift up your eyes. How can you say that, Brother Stan? After listening and living with Brother Stare for all those years? Hey, just like I said before, I'll get to the, if I get a chance here, I'll, I'll explain to you about beguile. Because that's what Ralph Stare is. It's just like Satan. Satan used Ralph Stare to beguile many people. Just like Satan you, uh, beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so he should corrupt your minds through the simplicity that's in Jesus Christ. Jesus came the first time to save us from sinning, to save us from our sins and from sinning, period. Who left us an example. I'll get to that scripture in a little while. That we are to follow his steps, who did no sin. Not like old Ralph teaches, as you'll hear the excerpts. I don't know if I have that one in this lineup. Oh, he said, Jesus is coming back again to save us from sinning. Like hell, he, did. he came the first time to save us from sinning. He's coming back the second time to give us new bodies that we are preparing in our spirit, our heart, our mind, our soul with all our strength to be this spirit that God has dwelling in us and the heart within us to be put in a new body. We are going to be prepared to be put in a new body. We're not going to be a filthy, vile, reprehensible character as the South Carolina State Supreme Court classified Ralph Stare. I'm going to start with the scripture, and I'm going to get into right into the liar Ralph Stare. Ralph, you are a liar. I remember I was talking to a brother the other day. And he said to me, yeah, I remember when Brother Stare said, don't call me a liar again, even if I lie. Well, he's a liar. You'll hear it by his own words, how perverted and polluted this man is, and has been for years. Just like I'll, I'll read something about sexual perversion. In the churches, the Baptist church, the Catholic church, I'm going to start with the scripture. In Isaiah chapter 49, 
Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name in his spirit. Praise God. Just like Paul was born out of due season to be an apostle, I was born out of due season to be a prophet of the Lord. Praise God. And he hath made my mouth a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. That's why I've said before, I thank God that I wasn't raised or brought up in even the Catholic Church. I only went to a catechism for a few years. But there was no religious system I was brought up in. I was, God kept me out of all the religious systems till he birthed me and had me born again in 1993. Praise God. I thank God for that. Because then there was no influence of any kind of religious spirit of this age. No matter what they are, all the Protestants, the Catholic Church, all the Protestant daughters of the Catholic Church, the protesters. And God said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Praise God. Glorify your name today, Father, in this judgment. Just like I said, Brother Stair, you'll hear it later on when I played this profound, uh, the spiritual polluted discernment that Ralph Stair has. But I'll get to it because he says it's showdown time. That's right, it's showdown time. By thy words shall we be justified, and by our words shall we be condemned. And just like it says in Malachi, then shall re you return and discern from the righteous and the wicked, from him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Then I said, I have labored in vain. Through all this stuff with the Milk Green series, and then you heard the one about Walter Martin, his last message on holiness, without which no man is going to see the Lord. That ain't the preaching of R.G. Ralph Stair. As you'll see here in the clips, by thy word shalt thou be justified, and by our words shall we be condemned. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain, yet. Surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. Praise God. Praise His holy name forever. Thank you, Father. Now we're going to get into the lie. I'm, I'm going to show you how profound Ralph Stare is a liar. He's been for years. But listen to this. This was an interview done in 1988. And remember now, Brother Stare has lied for years about how he continually tried to justify his statements that he said in 1988. He said, for years after that, I never said that the United States and Russia was going to have a nuclear war. I said confrontation. You're a liar, Ralph Stare. Just by your own words, you're a liar. And by your own words, you'll be condemned. Period. This is showdown time, Ralph. We'll see. Let God be the judge. And let all men like Ralph Stare be liars. Have you ever lied, Brother Stan? Of course. All men have lied. Period. In some shape or form. But Brother Ralph Stare continued in his lies. And, tries to, and, and continued to try to justify them. Listen to this excerpt of 1988. How Brother Stare said that he never said there would be a nuclear war. He always said it was a confrontation, and I mean, he has justified this for years. Oh, I said three things tonight. Yeah, listen to what he said, saints. This week, we've been telling you about a preacher whose followers sell almost everything they own and move to South Carolina to be with a man they call Brother Ralph. His followers say he is a prophet. His opponents say he's leading a cult and brainwashing people. Tonight, as his special report continues, Bill Baldini shows what is going on at Brother Ralph's church to people in the Delaware Valley whose family members are among Brother Ralph's faithful. Brother Stair is on the phone with us live right now from South Carolina. Good morning, you on People Are Talking, Brother Stair. Yes, I'm having a hard time here listening to you. Okay. I can't hardly hear you. Oh, how about now? Can you hear me now, Brother Stair? Uh, fairly well. Okay. Louder, uh, do you hear me loud enough to be able to respond? I believe so. Okay, Brother Stair. First of all, how do you know that the world is coming to an end? Because I believe God spoke to me. Uh, when did God spoke, speak to you? 
Now, listen to how he doesn't answer the question here about when God speaks to him. He'll, he'll, he'll evade the, he, he, just like Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton. I'm telling you, people, Jeffrey Epstein, you see, Ralph Starr used to school girls when they were younger so that when they became of age to have sex, that's what he would do. You can see it in the videos how he grabbed the young girls and pulled them up to his body. He was schooling them. How, how for a long time, when he first had a digital camera on the farm, he would take pictures of his private parts and put them on the camera. Then he'd give it to the young girls and told them, you make sure you bring this camera back to me now, so that way he could take the card out, so nobody else could see the perversion that the man was doing. How his satanic influence on the young girls there on the farm back years ago. But listen to how he evades the, the answer of how God speaks to him. Uh, all my life, I believed that the world was going to come to an end in uh, all my years of ministry because the scriptures teach that the end of, the, uh, of, the, of this time as we know it is, 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 is going to take place. But how do you know it's going to happen by the end of this year? Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. But how do you know it's going to happen by the end of this year? Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. Now, you hear that? First, it was the month of, you'll hear the entire clip here in a minute. But first, he said, before the month of May is over, there is going, God's going to shake America by either an economic collapse, re, the removal of Ronald Reagan from office, or a nuclear tactical war. Not a confrontation, Ralph. You're a liar. No, the removal of Mr. Reagan, or the collapse of our economy, or a limited nuclear war. But how do you know it's going to happen by the end of this year? Because I, I, the Lord spoke. I didn't say the end of the world is going to take place by the end of this year. That's been a misquote. Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. I did not say the end of the world is going to take place in this year. And I did not say that Christ would come within 10 months. I said we're going to see these three things take place upon the, upon the face of the earth within, within this year. Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. Okay, but you have said that President Reagan would either would, would leave office, that the economy would collapse, yes. and that we would have a nuclear war. Yes. Now, you hear him say yes. He also said out of his own mouth a tactical nuclear war, not a confrontation, Ralph. But you see, the man's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. Just like Jesus said, your father, you are of your father the devil, Ralph, and the lust of you father, your father you have continued to do for years. And the main thing that Satan was, he was a liar from the beginning, just like Ralph Starr is here. Period. First he said it was going to happen before the month of May was out in 1988. Then he changed it to the end of the year. Those are the three things I've said. Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. These are the members of a Christian commune in Waltersboro, South Carolina, a tightly knit disciplined group that believes this man, Reverend R.G. Stair, is a true prophet, the voice of God on earth. But how do you know it's going to happen by the end of this year? Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. No. The removal of Mr. Reagan, or the collapse of our economy, or a limited nuclear war. But how do you know it's going to happen by the end of this year? I didn't say the end of the world is going to take place by the end of this year. That's been a misquote. I did not say the end of the world is going to take place this year. Okay, but you have said that President Reagan would either would, would leave office, that the economy would collapse, yes. and that we would have a nuclear war. Yes. But how do you know it's going to happen by the end of this year? Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. That Mr. Reagan will be, uh, will not finish his term of office. I don't know what manner of way he will uh, not do it, whether he's removed uh, by either sickness or, uh, you know, assassination is always a possibility, or maybe he'll step down and allow Mr. Bush to become president so he can run as an incumbent. But I do not believe Mr. Reagan is going to finish his term of office. When do you think the end is, is going to happen then, the end of the world? I believe before the year 2000. So what you're saying is... I'm telling you that by the year 2000, if God doesn't make a move, then you can call the Bible a lie. That's what I'm telling you. Now, in essence, in essence, what I am telling you is that Jesus is coming before the year 2000. That's what I'm telling you. I, I believe that. Well, hey, hey, no I doubt in my that. mind about it. No doubt in my mind about it. No. You hear that? He always lied about that statement right there. He said, I was pushed to say Jesus was coming before the year 2000. You're a liar, Ralph Stair. Your own words, your spirit of hell, 
You anybody? It's obvious. Don't like like uh, you know, old Ralph used to always say, "Don't overlook the obvious, people." Do you know that you're you're, you're frightening a lot of people, Brother Stan? I'm also I'm also strengthening a lot of people. But do you know that you're you frightening? Know. Yeah, he's strengthening a lot of people. All right. You know one thing. One thing that the uh, one thing that uh. The scripture is clear. Hope deferred make it the heart sick. When he was telling people Jesus would come before the year 2000, he made a lot of people's hearts sick by putting their hope that Jesus was coming before the year 2000. Because that hope deferred will make anybody's heart sick. I even mentioned that scripture to him right after that happened. I, I, I think it was uh, probably a few months or a year later. I said, you know, a lot of people's hearts have been made sick because they thought Jesus was coming by the year 2000. Well, you heard his flat-out lies right there. What a liar the man is. Ralph Steer is a liar. You heard his lies saying, I never said there'd be nuclear war. I said I'm confident. You're a liar, Ralph. Your own words just proved you're a liar. But that's no big deal. This is showdown time, Ralph. Listen to this statement he makes about... Millions of people believing in the healing power of Jesus Christ in the United States back in 1988? What a farce. If that was true, if there was millions that actually believed in the healing power of Jesus Christ, there would be, there, there would be no medical system out there today. Because people would have been running to Jesus for healing instead of the doctors, Ralph. And Linda, we understand that you had, a, you had trouble with your first pregnancy and had to have a cesarean section. And that uh, a reverend... Now, this is an interview, and this, this young lady here, she had, like you heard the man say, she had a cesarean section uh, to deliver her first baby, but the second one was stillborn there in uh, Walterboro. But that's neither here nor there. What His statement about the doctors is amazing. There, Brother Stair does not believe in medicine or doctors. How are you going to deliver this baby? Brother Stair does not believe in medical doctors for himself. Linda may go to any doctor anytime she wants to. We have hospitals here. We have the state of South Carolina. Brother Stair, there's a, there's a man. Services that are operated within the hospital. Many times that these people want to go, they are welcome. They are free to go. Brother Stair. They have their money. They can go like any normal human being. Okay, Brother Stair, we have a... Uh, we have one of your newsletters here that says, warnings to the people of God, yes. stop running to doctors for healing. That's right. I have a right to speak to God's people and tell them what I feel is God's will for their lives. Well, then you just told us that then of the course you go to any doctor she feels. But, listen, but she don't have to do what I tell her. If she feels like she wants to go, she has a right to do that. This is a land where you can still practice religious freedom. Huh? No, no, there is no it, freedom. You still are allowed to practice what you believe, and there are thousands of people, millions of Not people you, in, in America who believe that Jesus Christ is their healer. Now, did you hear that? Millions of people in America that believe that Jesus Christ is their healer? I don't think so, Ralph. What a, what a, uh, an abomination in the eyes of God. What a liar. But I'll tell you another thing about his statement about doctors. He said for quite a long time in the early 90s that if anybody that lived there, literally said this over the broadcast, that if anybody that lived there with him in the community there, if they went to the doctor they wanted to go, they weren't allowed to come back. That was his statement for a long time. I heard that back in the early 1994 when he used to say that. Quite a bit. If you want to go to doctors, you can go, but don't cut. You ain't coming back here. See what a liar the man is. Listen to the rest of this uh, interview back in 1988. And we pray for the sick, and we practice and believe in divine healing. Lie. Do you know what he is? Jesus. Tell it, ma'am. You are a Jesus Christ intimidator. See what she uh, intent? Not in the Jesus Christ intimidator. It, Jesus Christ imitation. That's what she, I believe she was trying to say. He's trying to, he's an imitation, but not of the not of the real Christ. He's an imitation. 
I'm you're not. You're not. You are 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 not. You are
sexual behaviors. Hey, Ralph, uh, I wonder if this describes your behavior. Just like the South Carolina State Supreme Court said, his character is reprehensible. Potential detrimental effects on pornography users include toxic sexual behaviors. As you'll hear here when I finish this uh, excerpt of Sister Natasha. Emotional, mental, and medical illnesses and difficulty forming and maintaining intimate relationships. That describes Ralph Stare to a T, people. Now, listen to what they said there about uh, toxic sexual behavior. That's what pornography does. And old Ralph Stare at one time, I got an excerpt, but I don't need to use it. He said that his pornography was strong meat. And that only he could handle it. The brothers shouldn't, wouldn't be able to handle it, but he could handle that strong meat of pornography. He actually called it that one day, people. For five months, I went to work at the community. The first month, he would find me in the dining hall and, and touch my butt a lot. Now, that's the same thing he did with Sister Andrea, but Sister Andrea didn't put up with it. Smacked him right in the face with the truth, as you'll hear here in a, in a minute. The second month, he would he would come in and he would start lifting up my shirt and touching me sexually. And the third and fourth month, he would just repeat himself. And the fifth month, he asked me to go to the radio room, and I didn't want to go there. I did not. And so... He wanted to give me something, so I went, and and when we got inside, he gave me what he wanted to give me, and then he started fondling my breast, and he kept asking me, do you feel good, do you feel good, and I didn't say anything because I didn't know what to do, I just didn't, and so I turned around to go out the door, and he grabbed me from behind, wrapped his arms around me and he said I wish I could keep you in here longer and then he started touching and rubbing my vagina inside my pants now did you hear that I don't believe the young girl 16 years old was lying about what Ralph Stair's sexually toxic behavior was implemented on her in the radio room and you'll hear uh, other, if I have the excerpt, where he said, uh, uh, it was only taken a few weeks after, where he said, he, uh, I touched him right in the radio room. You did, Ralph, huh? I'm telling you, the man is a profound liar, a perverter of the truth. It's showdown time, Ralph. It doesn't really matter. May God increase your outreach so you can spread your perversion to more perverts out there that go along with your perverted lifestyle and spirit of hell. Now, listen to this excerpt of old Ralph before he got Natasha in the radio room. This one you can see on the uh, video with uh, Craig Mack supports Preacher R.G. Stair on rgstair.com. But listen to this. We're going to make it. We're going to make it nice, trim, slim and trim. I'll give you a rub down. See, he's talking to Natasha right there. He gave her a rub down. Yeah, and then later on, he gave her a rub down, all right. You just heard the perverted rub down he tried to give her. But here's the prototype of Christ now. Going around, squeezing women's asses. Touching their vagina. God knows what else he tried to do. And what else he has been doing. Listen to this one here. Now this is a short excerpt from the, when he put Andrea out of the tabernacle one day. Cause you want to woman have your way with me, you tell me. You want anyway. Because you want to woman have your way with me, you tell me. My, no. My that way with you? Yes. What, what do I want yes. with you? Why, 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 why you squeeze my butt over there? Why? Uh. Why? Why? When I kept on saying no, 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 no. Why? You hear that? She said no, no, no. Why well, kept saying no, but he kept on squeezing her ass. 
and listened to his answer. What a liar the man is. First he said actually why he did it, to see how she'd react so he could go farther with her. But when he, when he, when that, watch how he changes the word. He's a liar. So she'd show out? No, God don't do that to people to have them show out, Ralph. You're a liar. But anyways, listen to this, saints. Why you did that? Why? I don't see how you, like, why? To make you show out like this? See? What a liar. See, he had to change it real quick because he caught himself, but not enough time to stop what he actually said to see how she'd react, just like he did with Natasha to see how she'd react. And there's other women that can give the same testimony of this sexual predator. All right, let's play this excerpt here. Listen to this excerpt of old Ralph playing the devil's advocate. That the thought of many hearts may be revealed. Now, if you understood that, then you would know why I was approaching each person the way I did. And eventually I brought out what was in their heart. The one said I corrupted her. All I did was show their corruption. It was in her own heart. Are you going to receive this tonight? Or? You hear this pervert? I, I, I thought the Bible said to uh, keep yourselves pure. Be not a partaker of other men's sins. Be holy as I am holy. Hey, Ralph. Well, uh, whatever. He, the man's a liar, but it don't matter. Showdown time, Ralph. You sit there and pull back into your shell. What we have today is people in the church who are seeking to save their own life. I wonder if Ralph's doing that, seeking to save his own life. He had to hire some criminal lawyers, you know, with for some big bucks, just like uh, Bill Cosby did. Just like all these perverts, like Jeffrey Epstein did, until he killed himself. Now, I want to uh, play some excerpts that I used from Brother Kirk's messages back in the late 80s, early 90s on bitterness and uh, the message on bitterness and the message on despite. How God targeted perverts like R.G. Stare in the church at that time. I mean, there are, there are men out in this world that are living ungodly and filthy lives. But God gave him a gift and he'll never take it away. You've got to recognize the giver in the gift. But then you ought to be another, you ought to be careful and recognize too that the ungodly lifestyle they're living today is a lifestyle perversion. It's a reprobate lifestyle. He said, but don't do after their work, for they say and do not. In other words, what, what is actually happening is this. the men that are around today that are living life, yes, is a godly lifestyle. They're still, oh, I watched it one time. I watched a man operating the gift. I mean, just brought him down, but the spirit was so in God, I said, Lord, what in the world? He said, he's holding the truth and then right. We, 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 we don't feel right in judging somebody. It seems to be very dedicated to bearing on truth. See that? Don't feel right in judging somebody. It seems to be very dedicated, but doesn't bear any fruit. The fruit of righteousness. The fruit of holiness. The fruit of what grace actually teaches us to do. To deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present evil world. Not old Ralph. You'll hear it here in a little bit about his, uh, his perverting of the word of God like the Pope of Rome. He's the Pope of Kennedy's. R.G. Stare, the Pope of Kennedy's, South Carolina. Revilers will not inherit the king. He said, and such were some of you. He said, you were that. He says, but now you're a new creature in Christ. If any man be a new, all things are passed away. All, all things are new. This is an excerpt I said uh, from the message of bitterness that Brother Kirk preached on how targeted people like R.G. Stare. But, oh, Ralph, he ignored the instructors of God. He, 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 he rejected the teachers of God and their word of instructions in righteousness and correcting, and doctrines, and reproof. He rejected them all, as we'll get to in the end 
of this showdown time with Ralph. The word of God out of Proverbs chapter 5. But listen to Brother Kirk here. All things are become new. Let me go on to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. See, because they was teaching in Corinthians that you could do this kind of thing. Yes, they were. They was teaching that. Come on, man. They had a man in the land with his own mother, his own husband's wife. He said, and you, 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 you don't mourn. You, you, you boast in your glory in the thing. They're saying, hey, have you heard about what you all did? Murmur about, talk about, amen, gossip about. Yet they, nobody judged it. And they all just thought, hey, old Joe's going to just make it on in. Go cruise on down the line. And the Apostle Paul said, hey, man, anybody do these things, I don't care what they say, the Apostle Paul said, they're not going to enter God's kingdom. Right. I mean, it's not right before God. But they actually were letting it kind of just think about it and say, hey, man, must be all right. I mean, man's under the unction of the Spirit. Oh, Apostle Paul, apostolic authority. You know, he might have been a little old man. Amen. See, but he had authority. Yeah, that's right. That was the word of God that Brother Kirk was preaching there about people like Ralph Stair, perverters of the truth and the word of God in the church. Here, I'm going to play this one more excerpt by Brother Kirk. There's only one way you know you're right with God. That's doing the will of God and the word of God. Period. Just like Peter said, he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin or sinning, that he should no longer live the rest of his time to fulfill the lust of the flesh, but that you should be able to fulfill the will of God. The will of God is sanctification and holiness in our lives. Period. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and the reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. The Lord is kind. In other words, you can't even determine whether you're good or evil by God's kindness to you. No, just because God is kind to you and is nice to you and is prospering you and blessed or any other thing, that doesn't mean he considers you either good or evil. You don't know whether he considers you good or evil by his kindness. That's the truth. Most people say, oh, look, God's being kind to me. The Lord must be pleased with me. No, sir. That's a grave error. See that? That's a grave error. See, that's what Ralph has done for years. Oh, God must be pleased with me. He gave me a million dollars. He gave me this. He gave me that to keep the radio going. No. Hey, Satan is just as prolific as giving people money as God is. You can mark that down, people. Listen to what Brother Kirk goes on to say here. The Bible right there tells you it's a grave error. Grave error. It's a grave error. And I'm going to get us that, but not tonight. It Amen. Is. It's a grave error. There's only one way you know if you're right, if you're doing the will of God. I remember years ago, the, the Lord showed me something about that. I know it, it sounds crazy, but it, that's the only way. He that turneth his way here, from here in the law, even his prayer, shall become sin. He can't do that. Amen. He that turneth his ear away from the law of God, even his prayer becomes sin. R.G. Stair has turned his ear and people's ears away from the law of God for years. I'm going to end this, this little segment because I'm going to continue here. I'm going to end this segment, what Brother Kirk said, the only way he knows is by the will of God. This is what Jesus Christ said about salvation. And the saints of God, those that, those that have truly been born again, not twice dead, plucked up by the roots like Ralph Stair. Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do even also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. That's right, this prophet of God, I don't need to go around to touting about my calling. My calling will answer for itself. But this is in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 12 there. Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. At the straight gate. Not the gate that Ralph teaches, the broad way. Enter ye in at the straight gate. 
Just like you said, Dad, Jesus is coming back to save us from sinning. Well, that ain't what's going to make it through the straight gate if you continue in your sins. Because grace is not going to abound that we may continue in sin. Period. Grace was teaching. Grace was given to us to teach us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. To cease from sinning. To follow in the steps of Jesus the Christ. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength and the power. Not a form of godliness like Ralph Stairs had for years. Denying the power of God to deliver and turn from every single sin. Every abomination. That's why I said in the Old Testament, we are delivered to do these abominations. That's what Ralph teaches. He's been delivered over to Satan. Many years ago, people. And he in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way. They lead it to destruction. And many there be that go there and that. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Which leadeth on to life. And few there be that find it. That it is eternal life. Few there be that find it. Or find the way into eternal life. Through the straight gate and the narrow way. Few there be that find that way, people. So if you got it, you better guard it with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and walk in the fear of God and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Remember I told you, God revealed to me just a little while ago that His fear protects His holiness, guards His holiness. Praise God. And that's why we are to walk in the fear of God, which is clean, enduring forever. Beware of false prophets in verse 15, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are they ravening wolves. I got excerpts on Ralph ravening. In fact, remember now, Ralph means wolf counsel. You shall know them by their fruits. Wonder what kind of fruit you see Ralph Stair has. I think in the Old Testament it calls it vile figs. That's the kind of fruit Ralph Stair has produced for years. But anyways, Ralph Stair is a liar. You heard his own words about nuclear war, and then he, for years now, I'm not exaggerating, years he said nuclear confrontation. I never said there'd be a war. Well, Ralph, it doesn't matter. You're a liar, period. That ain't going to change the truth. Let Ralph Stair be a liar and let God be true with his truth and his word. May God bless the word of your heart. I thank God for being able to use these things for Ralph Stair to present the truth. In a way it should be presented. And I'm going to go on here in a few minutes with another message about R.G. Stair and some more of his perverted lip service that he's given for years. Remember, Ralph, it's showdown time. We'll see who stands in the fear of God and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit in this time frame we live in. Because I can guarantee you what. It don't matter. I don't care. Like I said, I don't care if he gets a greater outreach. That doesn't make him godly. It's anyone. Any one of us. Saints of God. Who walk in the fear of God and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Cleansing ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Not walking in the flesh like R.G. Stair teaches and does. The apostles left us an example, saints, how holily and blameless they lived among the saints of God. That's the way the ministers of God are to be in this time. To be able to pray for the saints, to be delivered from all evil. Deliver us from evil, Jesus said. Lead us not into temptation. That's how Christ suffered, people. When he was tempted, he suffered because he didn't give in to the temptations. And that's how we're, we're blessed is the man that endures temptations. For when he has tried, he shall receive the crown of life. What, for giving into him? No, for enduring him. For resisting the devil and he will flee. Mock on, Ralph. Fill up your cup. It ain't quite full yet. It ain't quite full of your lies and deception and beguiling that you've done for years. 
showdown time. May God bless you, saints. In Jesus' name, may he bless you with his fear and with the grace of God through the comfort of the Holy Spirit for this time we live in. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Now until he comes. Amen.